H7 is loop, the loop. I'm going to give you a problem that I encountered long ago and modify it slightly so that it applies to the loop to loop where we can look at the G forces at the very bottom if the loop to loop happened to be a perfect circle, which it is not. We'd like to do the problem where we come down and then the roller coaster enters the loop phase. And we'd like to look at this point down here where the maximum G force will be about. There's going to be no friction. And we want to know the height where when the mass gets up here, people feel weightless. When they design loop-to-loops, they will actually get this close to being weightless up here. But down here, because the G-forces will be high, as we'll show you, they have more of the tear, upside-down teardrop effect so that you don't have this very very high g g force notice though when they have these loops they do not have a perfect circle especially down at the bottom this might be nice and circular but when you get down here it's like a teardrop upside down teardrop and that's because the g forces would get too too high if that were a circle all the way around like a circle at the bottom. And I would like to show you why that's a danger. Olympia Loopings, it's a portable roller coaster and they pull this out for Oktoberfest in carnivals and it appears in carnivals in Germany, especially Oktoberfest, also called the Munich Looping. So we'll call this here the top and we'll call this the bottom. And we'll let here, you know, T represent top and B represent bottom. And what we want to do first is find what H is so that we can be weightless at the top, feel weightless. Now, roller coasters here, if we were to replace with small wheels, I'm going to show you later that small wheels rolling down inclines behave like sliding masses with no friction. So we're going to consider this as a block with no friction, but it does have application, as we'll see later, with little wheels and a car and going down an incline. So we first have to find what H is, and let's go ahead and put in here a radius, capital R, for the, the loop part. So first we're going to find out here what is H, so that we are weightless, we feel weightless at point T. So let's, let's do that first. So we have the kinetic energy at the beginning. It's going to be zero because we're going to start out and start sliding down. If we let this be point O for the beginning, then we could write down the kinetic energy at O plus the potential at O equals the kinetic energy at the top plus potential energy at the top. Now we start out at rest, so that's zero. And then this would be your MGH. You know, the references here, 
If you don't specifically say where the reference is, people will assume that it's the ground. But it, it, you know, here you're showing that this is from the ground up, so so we're good. And then the kinetic energy at the top there is one half m v top squared plus. Now we have some height. We have here m g two times r to get to the top there is twice the radius, 2r, like that. Now this is not going to be enough to solve because that t is going to be an un velocity. The t is going to be an unknown, but the weightless condition is going to help us get that. And we're going to do that with a force diagram. So if we were to look at here, the force diagram, for T, you're pushing down here with a normal force, which we're going to set in a second to zero, and we have gravity coming down, and that's going to be equal to mass times acceleration, which is to be T squared over R toward the center, toward the center. And we're going to set this equal to zero so we don't feel anything pushing down on us. Well, actually, you're upside down, so you don't you don't you feel like you're leaving your seat. In other words, the seat's not pushing on you because this would be the normal forces like the seat pushing on your body, and that's going to go to zero. So now we're ready to eliminate the velocity, and what I would like to do here is write both equations down. MGH, this one up here, equals one half MVT squared plus two MGR. And the next equation here is MG from this one is MVT squared over R. And I like to bracket these like my good friend in graduate school who became a plasma physicist did at the University of Maryland. So that's neat. And then we're going to want to make these a little bit different. I'm going to, going to go here to get rid of the denominators. That's going to be my preference here. So on the top equation, I multiply by 2. 2 mgh is mvt squared plus 4 mgr. And then here, multiply by R, I get MGR is MVT squared. There's my pair of equations. And now I can see that I can put this in for the MT squared, and now I get to one equation. So I have two MGH is MGR plus four MGR. And here we, we notice that the mg combination is dropping out. So this will be independent of mass, the mass uh, that's undergoing the, uh, the roller coaster ride, and also what planet you're on. So we have 2h equals r plus 4r. So that means 2h is 5r and we want h so let's say here h would be 5 halves r or 2.5 that is your h so this is going to be here 2.5 r that's the answer so now we're ready to go for part two which is the g-force at the bottom. So g-force at bottom. So we would have here a conservation of energy, kinetic energy plus, we start this problem off the same way we did the other one, where now we're dealing with the bottom. We start off at zero and now I could put in what that is, but but for the moment, let me let me leave it as h. 
and then over here, I'm going to have one half and the bottom squared. And then for the potential energy at the bottom, I have zero. Now I need a force diagram, like I need two things here. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's the force diagram. And that, this is at, at the bottom, so I'll put a little B there. And here we're pushing up with a normal force at the bottom, it's pushing up and there's a gravity pulling down. And here, NB going up minus MG going down is your centripetal force, which is MV bottom squared over R. So these are, these are the two equations. And I'm gonna go ahead and write them down again as a pair. MGH is one half MV bottom squared. And here, I'm gonna write down NB equals because really what I want is the NB. That's gonna be what is pushing up on my body at the bottom. So if there was a scale on the bottom, I was sitting on a scale, it would, wet, it would give my apparent weight. So we have this equation, NB, bring the MG on the other side, and I'll have plus MV, V squared over R. So these are the two equations. And now I'll do the same thing. I'll multiply the top across by the two to get two MGH is MVB squared. And I'll multiply the bottom one here by, well, kind of, kind of like to have the solution to be for the NV. So I think what I'll do is go ahead and divide both sides of this one by R. So if I multiply this top one by the two and then divide by R, I'm gonna get something that looks like this because I really want that NB. So now we can put in for this, this is gonna get us one equation now. So the one equation will be NB, it's gonna equal MG plus, and here's where we're gonna put in two MG H over R, but I know that the H is five halves R. So when I do that, I get NB is MG plus the R's are going to cancel and the 2's are going to cancel. So this is going to be adding 5MG. Look at that. 6G. 6 times your weight. That's dangerous. So that's why they design it so that you have a non-circular bottom, say. So you would ease up on that G-force. So the inverted teardrop, the inverted teardrop to avoid the six Gs. Man, six Gs. G-force, G six. So this is a force, see the scale would weigh this, when we come to the acceleration at the bottom, we could say 6G, right? It's, it's, it's like it's, the acceleration goes with the weight. So they'll use 6G for the acceleration. And in that sense, it's like per unit mass. It's like whatever your mass is, it's gonna be six times that when you put the mass in, you get the force. So I'd like to do one more thing and that is a problem that was in the book, I believe, asked to do this point over here. 
this point over here, a little box there, what happens there if you're up halfway? And they call that point Q. So let's do that. So that's, we're going to do here point Q. Well, we set it up the same way. We have the kinetic energy plus the potential at the beginning is now the kinetic energy at Q plus potential at Q. Start at zero. This is going to be your NGH, and we know the H is two and a half R, but we'll leave it like that for now. This is going to be one half MVQ squared. And this here at Q is going to be simply, that's going to be just up one R. So that's MGR. And then we need to have our force diagram that goes with that. I'll make this Q. So we're pushing in here toward the center, the center, that's a centripetal force. And we also have here though, MG going down. This is then the normal force at Q pushing in. So the normal force at Q pushing in, that's really all, all you have there. So that's gonna, in that direction. So that's going to be mass times acceleration. And this is going to be the MV squared at Q over, over R. And now we can write our two equations down as we did before. And GH is one half MV Q squared plus MGR. And we also have, uh, for the second equation, we have NQ is um, VQ squared over R. And I would, I would like to know what that is, pushing, pushing on us. Pushing on us, we, we feel we're sideways, so we'll feel this on our body, pushing us toward the center, see what that G-force is. And we also have an mg going down. So if we look at this, these two equations, I'm gonna take the top one, multiply by, by two, and divide by capital R. So then I get mvq squared over R. And this is going to be multiplying by two. So this is two mg and divide by the r. So multiply by two, you get a two in front of the mgh. You get that two goes away. And you get a two over here. And we divide by r at the same time. So we have the r in two places and it cancels over there. So now what we can do, what we can do now is plug this solve, solve for MVQ squared over R, and that's going to get it for us. And that's equal to, now we can put in five halves. So that's going to be here. When you do that five halves, let's, do, let's go ahead and put in two mg, so over r, and we're going to put in for the h, five halves r, and then we're going to subtract two mg from that. So the mvq squared over r is going to be two mg over r times five halves r minus two mg. So this part here, the twos cancel, the r's cancel, I get five mg. Now this is interesting. We're gonna have three g's. So the normal force here is gonna be three mg. We got three g's coming in. Now I'd like to point out that here, we got this acceleration, let's go ahead and give you here x and a y unit vectors. So this is the x direction, this is the x direction, and this is the y direction. So here, 
I have a force in the negative I direction, and I'm, if I want the acceleration, the acceleration X, you take the force and divide by the M, because F equals MA, so this is gonna be minus three G. So that's this one going this way, the AX. And then we do have, remember, mg going down, so that's, that's your y, and for your y you have a minus g. We're picking this as positive to the right, going up. So these are the two accelerations, 3g going this way, 1g going down. So if you were to look at here, adding these together, if you take this and bring it, you always can move a vector as long as parallel to itself, as long as you don't stretch it or compress it or rotate it. So if you put it over here, like this, the A Y, then this, this here, becomes your total vector. This is the total vector at this little angle there. So we could find what the total vector would be. That would be using you know, this is basically three and one, so you're taking the square root of three squared plus one squared, and my signs are gonna give you plus everywhere, and this is gonna be then square root of 10, and that's about, let's uh, calculator 3.16, so that's the, the g-force you experience, so you don't really get much because of the the gravity pulling down is at three is really the, the big thing here. And if you go for the tangent of the angle, you have one over three. All right. So one over three, that's gonna give you an angle. So that would give you an angle of 18 degrees. So the acceleration vector is 18 degrees south of due west. So you could write this neatly, this uh, force, the total force at Q, you can write that neatly as here, minus three mg i hat, that's pointing to the left, minus, 1 G M G J hat. That's a pointing down. And I've seen some books, you know, give this as minus 3 M G. They would do something like this, minus M G, where this is the X component, that's the Y component. I think this is probably better. You can just do it like that. So, and then if you wanted to do that for the, for the bottom here, where we look at, let's say here, for example, if you wanted this, the N and B at the bottom, that force at the bottom is pushing you up, that would be uh, here, have figured it out, 6 mg, and that's going to be j hat. That's the force that's on you. So the, bo uh, the, the bench where you're sitting is pushing up with 6 mg. And then the force here at the top That would be looking at uh, this one here. The, we're looking for the force that the roller coaster is exerting on you, what's it pushing on you, and that would be zero. You feel weightless. That's not good. So they actually designed it so that's not zero, but a little bit, you know, non-zero, but still pretty small. Well, that's a nice problem to do those points.
different points there, three points, and to really study the roller coaster. Problem, good exercise.